This episode takes us farther into the Intrepid AI platform by working with custom nodes and running simulations. We will use a pre-built Python node that generates positions to send to the controller and actually move a simulated vehicle. Let me show you how easy it is to do so and test your capabilities dynamically. Let's get started. Now, this node that I just created for this tutorial, uh, of course, uh, as I said, this is a Python node. In fact, it's a custom node that I have created with the Intrepid Python SDK. Now, the, uh, in this part of the tutorial, I'm going to explain how to uh, implement such a node uh, so that we can look inside the logic uh, from a code perspective and, of course, how to publish and use a node like this one uh, that you can build yourself adding your own logic. So let's have a look at that. The very first thing that we need to know is the uh, existence of the Intrepid Python SDK. Uh, that is uh, freely available at uh, the pypy.org uh, and you can install with pip install Intrepid Python SDK. Once you are done with that, uh, we can move to the code and I'm going to show you the um, template that you find in uh, what we call the Intrepid Python cookie cutter template. So what is this? Well, it's uh, a way to define the logic of uh, a custom node. Uh, how to do that? Well, you need to, uh, of course, import um, the uh, Intrepid QS node uh, and Intrepid types from the Intrepid Python SDK. The most important part of this um, implementation is probably this one and the callback. So here you uh, have the definition of the node. In this particular case, we are seeing that uh, the node contains uh, two inputs. One is a flow input, the other is uh, an integer. Uh, then we have uh, an output called indeed output, and that's a float. Another important part of this is um, registering the node and registering the callback. What the callback does is essentially implementing the logic of that node. And we are going to uh, show you what is the logic of the node that we just uh, simulated. So let's move to the real code that implements uh, this node here. Uh, it's going to be something that if you know Python, uh, it's quite easy to read. Uh, but of course, I'm going to drive you through the code. As you can see here, we have the uh, create node, so the node definition. Uh, and there is, of course, the uh, list of inputs right here and the list of outputs right here. Uh, the types that you uh, assign to each input uh, can be specified using the intrepid type. So in uh, the case of an agent ID, we have an integer. In the case of a drone position, we had a vector, uh, which is indeed vector. Uh, the trajectory is a bit more special, is an array of vector. So it's going to be uh, a type vector, but uh, is array is true. Same for something. Then we go to the list of outputs. You can find, as always, the flow, the altitude, which is a float, uh, and all the other five are essentially floats as well. Now, the most important part of this, uh, as I said, is the callback function. Usually, the code below the node definition, uh, you never have to change that. Um, the only thing that you, of course, need to change is the callback function, which is very specific to your particular project. Uh, and uh, we are going to see how does this logic uh, is uh, implemented with Python via the callback function. Now, one thing to remember is that the signature of the callback function that you see up here has to be exactly the same as the uh, input, uh, input configuration of the node, of course. So this callback function is essentially the function that will be executed in this, in this case uh, 10 times in a second. Uh, it will read the inputs, it will perform a calculation, we will see which one, and it will... Uh, uh, write to the outputs in order to make this information available to the velocity controller. So let's have a look at the callback function. So as I said, the signature is exactly the same signature as the node. So we have agent ID, drone position, trajectory, and something, even though it doesn't anything, <laughs> it doesn't do anything, uh, it has to be there because we added it to the, uh, to the input configuration. The output configuration is, of course, five floats. 
Uh, it's not mandatory in Python, but it's always good to have a, a more readable code uh, for you know those who have to maintain eventually, so they would know immediately what this callback function is returning. Now let's go uh, to the logic. So what the logic does is something uh, relatively simple, which is uh, extracting the drone position from the equivalent of the GPS sensor, and then essentially perform this uh, while loop uh, that will go uh, through the trajectory one waypoint at a time. What we do uh, with that waypoint, so which we call active waypoint, is something extremely simple as converting the global uh, coordinates to local coordinates, which is where the vehicle in the simulator is running or is flying in this case. Uh, for doing uh, for that conversion, we use the geodetic to uh, ENU. Uh, which is part of the PyMap3D uh, package of Python. This is to show you that um, you are pretty much free to use any Python package that you need for your particular project. So if you are doing, for example, computer vision or object uh, or obstacle detectors or avoidance, and you need to use uh, PyTorch, TensorFlow, NumPy, Math, etc., you are pretty much free to do so. So being on the Intrepid Python SDK, uh, doesn't really uh, limit you in uh, uh, you know, using particular packages. It's absolutely compatible with the entire Python ecosystem. So once we uh, have uh, the local um, coordinates of the current waypoint, uh, we print a bit of stuff. I always like to uh, print as much as I can <laughs> in order to understand what's going on. Then I, I'm going to uh, repackage uh, the... Uh, active waypoint coordinates from global to local. So we save them back into active waypoint dictionary, which at this point will contain X, Y, and Z instead of latitude, longitude, altitude. At this point, we calculate a distance from the drone to the current waypoint, very simply with these four lines of code, which does a uh, computation, you know, the typical distance uh, calculation. And then we check that the distance to the waypoint is below a certain threshold. I set this threshold to 10 up here, but you're free to do uh, to set it whatever you, you, you need. So this means that uh, as we get uh, 10 meters far from the uh, current waypoint, we consider it reached, and so we can move to the next waypoint, which is exactly what this code does. It just prints, hey, I reached the waypoint and counter plus equal one, which means increment the counter so that next time we enter in this, um, uh, in this callback function, we are going to extract trajectory counter, which in that case will be counter plus one, so we move to the next waypoint. And that's how you keep moving one waypoint at a time along that trajectory. It's time to calculate the velocity factor and the velocity um, coordinates, or in fact the velocity dimensions, or the velocities along the three axes that our velocity controller needs. Uh, and that's something that we do exactly here. Now, those who are familiar with robotics and uh, vehicles in general, they know exactly what I'm doing here. For those who are less familiar with that, the velocity factor essentially is a nice way to say, if you are far from a waypoint, you can push gas and you can, let's say, move quicker or faster, and as you approach the waypoint, uh, indeed this depends on the distance to the waypoint, we try to slow down a bit. Now when it comes to um, uh, calculating the altitude, there is also another logic that I used, but you are free to use whatever you uh, feel like. So the altitude in this case is maintained across all waypoints, so we maintain the current altitude when all the waypoints have reached so that we don't have this weird you know, ups and downs of a vehicle, in the reality, they can be also very dangerous. At this point, we are ready uh, with all the information that the velocity controller needs, so we can return altitude, yo, and the three uh, velocities uh, in the, from the callback function. Now, at this point, uh, we need to move to the execution of this Python node. So what we do is exactly this. So we have uh, saved this as a my code tutorial to val to indicate that we are using a velocity controller and therefore uh, our callback function is indeed returning 
a um, velocity um, uh, information. So what we want to do here is um, just launch this node and uh, what you will see in the terminal is something very simple that says I created a node which is called frag node SDK tutorial 2. The node name is exactly this one. Uh, and essentially the node now is waiting for the intrepid agent or the intrepid sim, so basically the runtime, to communicate with the node because the runtime is going to execute the entire graph while in our server we are executing just the node. So this is executing this node, but the rest of the graph is executed by the runtime. So we need a way for the runtime to communicate with the node or the nodes, there might be more than one, of course. They will all be listening to different servers so that you can um, uh, collaborate, let's say, to the computation of the entire graph uh, in a distributed way. Now it's time to launch the simulator. What you see here is the command that um, essentially launches the simulator, uh, but using this dash dash load and uh, localhost 9999, which is exactly the host where our Python node is executing. Uh, and so basically what we are doing here is informing the simulator that we are going to execute a graph, uh, which is the project given by the, uh, the token, the security token, as per the uh, you know, tutorial one. But in addition to that, we're also saying, hey, there is, in the graph that you are executing, there is also uh, a Python node or in fact a custom node, it can be built in any language, uh, that is listening on uh, uh, 127.0.0.1.9999. And that's all you need. At this point, you can, uh, uh, we can launch the simulator. We should see the drone flying again. But if we move back to the node, to the Python node, we're going to see the node in execution. So what we see here, is essentially the, uh, the distances that we are printing, the active waypoint, the index of the waypoint, and also uh, some other information that we decided to print from uh, uh, Python. As we get close to 10 meters, as you can see, we uh, move to the next waypoint. In this case, we are also going down, which is a five meter elevation, uh, which is exactly the uh, five meter active waypoint altitude. So, so far it's all good. Now there are four waypoints. Unfortunately in Python we start counting from zero, so you will see waypoint three reached, but in fact that was the last waypoint, and this means that the node, uh, sorry, the drone has uh, completed the trajectory. Now there are many other things that of course we might want to do. For example, uh, we would like to spawn the simulator uh, with the uh, a more realistic environment, so not just an empty grid. What we have done for you is the city gen. So the city gen is something that is uh, uh, really cool in my opinion because it allows you to uh, procedurally generate a, um, a world in which you would like to run your simulation or your behaviors. Uh, so what you can do here, you can select the uh, assets that you want to generate. Uh, we have only buildings and trees for now, but we are adding more, of course, to make it even more realistic. Um, and of course, we can define, uh, uh, you know, the topology uh, of the, let's say, urban environment uh, that you want to generate. Once you are happy with that, uh, you can start the simulation. Of course, to do that, we need to restart our node um, and then start the simulation again. What happens now is that uh, our drone is executing its behavior in a, a more realistic uh, world, which is not just an empty grid, but is a procedurally generated world. Now, of course, in this particular case, um, the drone has not been designed to have any uh, sensor on board. So if there is a building in front of you, all of a sudden, um, you know, the drone is kind of blind. Uh, there are no uh, computer vision uh, or obstacle detectors. So the drone will blindly follow the trajectory, uh, ignoring completely the buildings that are in front of you. But in more sophisticated or more realistic scenarios, you will have 
a computer vision node uh, or a camera sensor, of course, uh, or any other object, ob object or obstacle detector uh, that can definitely uh, guide the drone, even if there is a building last second in front of it. That wraps up this tutorial. If you like to learn more about Intrepid AI, feel free to visit our Discord channel or the documentation site. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.